I'm working on a 2008 Mercedes-Benz C300 and the customer's complaint is that the driver's side headlamp is not working. As far as what they had already done was they've replaced the headlight assembly complete and they still have an issue. As you can see with the headlight switch in the on position we have full light on the passenger side and on the driver side we do have park lamps but no low beam and we actually do have high beam so the only thing not working is the low beam uh, bulb and it does have a error message for the low beam As far as trouble codes, we have in the front SAM, that is current and stored, the code for the uh, left low beam, either short circuit to B plus or open circuit. Upon looking at the original headlamp that they had, which was in the uh, back seat, it uh, looks like the wires basically the shielding on them just uh, deteriorated and came apart and so I think they attempted to cover them up uh, replace the bulb and stuff and still uh, did not work as far as the uh, wiring diagram and how the system's supposed to work um, for this vehicle it just has regular conventional Halogen bulbs, they are just uh, your 87H7 typical halogen bulbs um, on this vehicle. Here you have your left side, right side, and they get supplied power for all the bulbs by the front SAM. Pretty straightforward, just uh, 12 volt feeds, and they uh, have a common ground for each light separately. Obviously the one I am interested in is going to be this low beam on the left front. This yellow and black wire is going to be your turn on for the low beam and I will tap in right here at the headlight connector to check to see if we have 12 volts. So I've got my uh, Pierce probe on that line. I don't think you'll be able to see the colored wire. But I will show you. I've got the meter connected here for uh, checking the voltage, and I am grounded there on that stud. So, again, I'll turn them on. And no voltage feed to the driver's side. Now I can probably tell you what's going on based on what I see here with these wires. I actually ran into this to one of my personal, uh, actually it was a BMW, it's an X3, uh, I think around the same year. Uh, the same situation happened where the uh, shielding uh, deteriorated and the wires basically end up touching inside the headlamp and since there is no fuse if that 12 feed if that B plus feed basically gets shorted um, I'm gonna assume the fuse what now becomes a some sort of fuse is gonna be uh, internally in the front SAM. At this point I would say that the cause of the problem is going to be a faulty front SAM probably um, driver or some sort of that internal switching of the um, power feed for that light bulb. That one thing that you would have to confirm is as the trouble code states 
that this line is not open from there to here and that would basically finalize your check but being that from experience and on my vehicle uh, it was due to the module being basically damaged and burnt up and replacing that uh, module for me fixed it. Now being honestly being that the, the given situation is probably 99.9% .9 that the SAM front SAM which is this guy here which is also the fuse box uh, that the light control internally is damaged as we said from my experience and again I am gonna call this a bad module now in order to do that last final check to get to that wire that comes out of the SAM it involves a lot of work just to check that to make that last final determination but in order to do that to lift this out it's uh, quite a bit of work that's involved I believe even the wiper motor assembly the cowl obviously all that has to come off and able to give you enough room to lift out of there is what I think is the process for getting the SAM out again I am just going based off experience of the the wires touching the B plus shorted trouble code and the inability to provide power again I'm calling this a bad module because of the situation that I'm in I've actually called Mercedes and as far as here the local dealer he told me that it is a part that is no longer available or produced uh, from them I looked at possible used ones but there is none available here locally or close to me uh, and would have to then pull that out get the part numbers to try to match up for used one and even then I believe there might be some programming work involved possibly even uh, cloning work so because of all those kind of uh, obstacles and headaches to deal with and so on and so forth I actually just sat down and stared at this wiring diagram and was curious to see if I could figure some sort of substitute slash bypass that would possibly make this operate again and still be safe and not cause any type of issues hence the uh, contraption that I've got uh, arranged here for testing purposes initially my idea was to try to look and see what was involved with the actual headlamp switch to see if I can pick up anything off of there to start with the bypass but unfortunately it is all controlled via the LIN bus so there is it's all internal and then it's just information that's bussed over to the SAM and nothing can be picked up off of that so basically the next thing that I thought about was if I could pick up off of the power feed to the opposite light to control the faulty dead light and as far as how to use this and, and what I was thinking about is not directly feed 12 volts off of that basically tying in and splitting no because we have a module that I would hope would be smart enough to realize the extra amperage load and would probably shut the circuit hopefully or possibly be damaged in the uh, same way that this got damaged so the other idea was to use this feed on the control side of a relay since the relay control sides take very very little uh, amperage and then on the other side of the relay to then provide power to this headlamp 
And so this is basically what I've got set up. And I'm also doing some testing measurements to watch the whole system and make sure that everything is okay and operating within good levels. So this is the idea that I've come up with and it's just a rough sketch drawing. So here's the relay, here's the control side, here's your battery, positive post and the ground. To, so I would feed constant B plus to the relay there, have the passenger headlight B plus signal turn on signal, tap into the B plus feed to turn on that light from the module and just tap into it to then feed the control side of the relay and then from there just ground that and once this turn on gets sent it'll feed, it'll then close the relay and feed power to this headlamp. My idea was again to use this since this will not draw too much amperage uh, and see if it'll turn it on and leave it on and have everything be okay. What I'm going to do to monitor this first I am going to uh, amp clamp here and check what the uh, check what the amperage is before doing any of this that way I have a known good single bulb operating amperage uh, measurement before doing anything then I will still monitor that when having this hooked up and then also put an amp clamp here and monitor that draw as well just to compare and to see and make sure everything is uh, kosher. Again the important thing is going to be to monitor this before any modifications to see if it rises uh, at all very little stays about the same uh, that's what I'm interested in and curious. Um, I don't want to cause the last bit of damage to the uh, SAM and have to try to source one and make uh, one work. But also at this point I doubt anything's going to happen but if it were to happen we would still need to replace the faulty guy if something were to happen. But I'm curious to see what it's going to do, whether it's going to work or not, not sure. Don't know how smart this is as far as the way it monitors this and what's enough to trigger some sort of issue, trouble code, or shutdown of that circuit. I don't know, but I will do my best to monitor everything, measure everything, and see if this is a viable option. And just to show you in physical form and explain I've got this B plus direct B plus on the black side and here is the black side so I am feeding into here the other big white one which is this one is on the red cable which then will feed the B plus turn on signal when the relay clicks as far as the control side I am tapped in there with this white lead which I will clip here this one's just for the scope for a voltage monitor so I will clip it here from the B plus to the passenger side turn on which will then send voltage on the control side and then it grounds directly there. Here's my amp clamp for the driver side 
obviously amp clamp for the passenger side and I've got this unhooked from the relay so it's not going to control the relay it's going to be line factory operating right now and we'll take the first measurement of the amperage um, with just one of the lamps working as far as the channels go I have the blue going to the uh, amperage for that passenger side red is the voltage on the um, control side of the relay green is going to be the amperage going to the driver's headlamp you won't see anything with green and red at this point just uh, amperage on the passenger side Okay, so there's the amperage for just the one headlamp on the passenger side. And what I will do is I'll clip over the control side. And then off. Back on. And I will turn the uh, headlight switch off. And then back on. As far as the levels go, first we'll start off with just the one headlight, what the amperage level is, and we're taking an average. And it's at 4.4. .4. So that's the one light operating normal as it should. That's what it draws, just direct feed from the SAM module. Nothing else on that circuit. Just the H7 bulb. And if we look at the turn on, If we look at when both were on, we can now also measure the amperage of the driver's side, but also watch what happened when it turned on. It's part of why I had the voltage uh, measurement going, so that we can tell within the blue line when we fed the power to see what happened with the amps with the one that is feeding uh, basically both sides. As far as amperage on the other side, we're pretty much the same. So it's it's trying the same amount of amperage and that's because it's uh, you know single circuit alone just the bulb and B plus from the battery. So it makes sense that it's going to draw the same. The more important um, let's look at that feed when we turned on and stayed on the amperage pretty much stayed similar you had a little little drop but there is no major change in the way of that would concern me as far as causing any type of danger issue. We're not having a a great increase in the, in amperage where we would cause damage to the SAM. I'm not concerned with heating up any wires. I don't see that much of a crazy uh, worrisome level change to where I believe wires would start to get hot or any crazy situation like that. And again. At this point, it was all controlled by the switch and not by me connecting and disconnecting the wire. So everything still working in that normal operating range. So I would say, thinking based off of that information that captured, of monitoring just the one lamp, what it draws, where that level went, when we added the second one being fed, 
but only via a relay. So the amperage that we take for, for the relay feed is very, very, very minimal. And I would be okay to say this could be used as a bypass if you are stuck with not being able to get a replacement SAM. And also, if you want to think about it, if it's your own personal vehicle, the cost savings that this could give you. Obviously, make sure you wire up correctly the way you route things, the way you locate things, if you're choosing to do this. Also, what I didn't mention is that I would consider putting a fuse um, on this B plus feed because even though I'm sure you can decide to route this very well, if that were to ever just short out to negative, you don't want it to sit there for um, a while while it burns up itself. So it would be a good idea to fuse that, even though you know this will only take about four and a half amps, it would be a good idea again to fuse it in case someone were to pinch it straight to ground it won't cause any damage last thing I want to do out of curiosity is check and see if the uh, hooking this up changes anything with the trouble code now this is just out of curiosity because we know that the SAM knows that there's a short to B plus but whether it's monitored I'm, I'm curious on, on what end it's monitored on so first things first key on I'll clear it no fault key it off sit for a minute and now we will key it back on And we will operate the lights. So both sides are now turning on with our bypass setup. And let's see if the SAM stays unhappy. Uh, normally it would take a few um, key cycles actually, or cycles of the switch for the message to pop on it even wouldn't uh, log a trouble code right away so I can back out and reread okay so it still knows um, it's, it's watching itself on that left side uh, circuit uh, circuit feed and it knows that um, it, it's it's not proper so it's not happy we're still going to get a message but our lights are going to work if we were to wire it up that way just some final words again it looks like this is possible to make happen by installing the relay and using the one side to control the other this is just an option that uh, could be presented and especially if this is a DIY situation where you want to get both headlights working so you can drive at night and not have to deal with trying to figure out what to do for a replacement SAM. Obviously you're still going to have the annoying message on the dash but you will get your lights to operate. We know the amperage levels are okay nothing crazy is going on as far as electrical type of danger or or issues um, we are being controlled by a module so we know what can happen if a if, if an electrical issue were to happen you basically blow looks like the driver for the headlight control anyways um, but even at this point, I know we are not creating any issue. We're not creating any more higher amperage draw on that side. None of our wires are getting hot. And obviously they won't because we can see the numbers and nothing is going in a 
bad range. I hope you guys find this interesting and or helpful and maybe get some of you guys out of a jam. Uh, just be cautious when routing things and working with electric and make sure you fuse your lines when need be. So that's it for this one. This uh, I'll tell the customer what the issue is and why the headlight did not fix it and what the main problem is with this vehicle and we'll kind of just go from there. So again, I hope you enjoyed and thank you for watching.